everybody. I'm so glad you could join me here today for my webinar to talk about the ultimate violin course. My name is Mads Tolling, and I'm broadcasting to you from San Francisco, California. Wherever you are out there in the world, I hope you're doing well and staying safe. I'm excited to share with you a new concept in violin education, a step-by-step -step program that will rapidly take you to the next level as a violinist. And whether you're a total beginner or have some experience playing, I'm here to help. In this exclusive webinar, I'm going to tell you more about who I am and what we're offering here at the Ultimate Violin Course. I'll go over my top 10 tips to learning how to play the violin. I'll have a limited time offer, and then I'll answer the most frequently asked questions about playing the violin and learning with UVC. Now that we've got that out of the way, here's a little information about me. I got my start playing the violin using the Suzuki method at age six in Denmark. My first gig was busking on the streets of Copenhagen with my sister at age 10. And at age 20, I moved to Boston to attend Berklee College of Music. I studied with legendary musicians Jean-Luc Ponty and Joe Lovano. After graduating, I joined bassist Stanley Clark's band and the Turtle Island String Quartet and started touring the world. I won two Grammy Awards and was named Downbeat Magazine's Rising Star of the Violin in 2016. I've written and performed violin concertos and played on tons of motion picture and video game scores. I also lead my own groups and play internationally. The many masterclasses and workshops that I've done with thousands of students through the years have made me realize that my greatest passion in life is passing on the gift of music to others. So I've taken all my years of experience and created the ultimate violin course. You can be a total beginner and fit right in. You may have played the violin as a kid and now you're looking to get back into it. No matter what your situation, you are always welcome at UVC and I'll be there with you every step of the way. The violin is an amazing and beautiful instrument. There are so many different sounds that you can make on it and tons of different types of music that you can play. The goal at the end of the day is for you to play your favorite kind of music. I just want to give you the tools to enable you to do that. UVC is all online with video lessons that you can follow and play along with from the comfort of your own home. First of all, you'll learn what instrument to get, how to set it up, and how to play with proper technique. Most instructional violin courses focus on classical music, but UVC goes beyond that and gives you a well-balanced blend. You'll learn how to play songs from all sorts of styles, including pop, rock, folk, jazz, classical, and more. You'll even learn about music theory and how to improvise. What also sets UVC apart is our focus on rhythm and how that translates into being able to groove on a violin. At some of my performances, I frequently meet people who are really excited about learning how to play the violin, but they just don't know how to get started. Whether it's a question of time or resources, they feel it's just not a possibility for them. And for those who are privileged to learn to play music, once the pandemic hit, it became kind of hard and risky to take lessons in person, not to mention Private lessons are expensive. A violin pro will typically charge $100 per lesson. If you go every week, it would add up to over $5,000 per year. Even a more affordable local teacher at $50 per lesson would add up to over $2,000 per year. And what to do between lessons when you forget some of the things your teacher told you? How to find sheet music for the music that you're gonna play. None of this you have to worry about when you sign up for UVC. You literally have the lessons right at your fingertips and can access them anytime, anywhere, whether you're at the beach, at your house, you're on an iPad, maybe you're on a computer or on the phone. It doesn't matter. UVC is always there for you. The lessons take you from a total beginner to advanced. I've taken my 30 plus years of experience and put together a step-by-step -step curriculum that includes 50 plus streaming lessons and access to our private Facebook page where you could get answers to all the questions that you may have. You'll get all the sheet music, practice plans, 
and help from me so you can move forward at the right pace for you. More than anything, I really want you to make learning the violin easy for you. Don't get me wrong, the violin is a hard instrument to master, but the process to get there should be smooth. For example, you have this overhead camera that will make figuring out the left hand fingering super easy. And for each of the songs we go over, you have a play along that will speed up the learning process. You will have full access to our private UVC Facebook page where you can post videos of your playing and get tips from me and your fellow students. That way you can get feedback faster rather than having to wait for the next lesson all remotely, again, from anywhere. Okay, it's time for my 10 tips that'll really get you going on learning how to play the violin. We will start from basic to advanced, so sort of like what we would do at UVC. Tip number one, drum roll please. How to develop a bow that is straight like a laser beam. The source of bad sound is usually because the bow tends to drift all over the strings, sort of like a windshield wiper on a car. Hear that? So then you get a really unfocused sound like that. The thing about it is the right hand and the bow are the two most important things when you play the violin. The violin is a really fascinating instrument because you know you get the sound by horsehair on this bow rubbing against these metal strings here. And what happens is these horsehair grab the strings and make them vibrate. And those vibrations go down into this hollow wooden box here and shoot out through these F-holes and voila, you have sound. However, if the bow does not travel in a straight line, then you get more of this sort of distorted muffle tone. Uh, this can be cool sounding in rock and roll. But not to start out. So to make a good sound, you must make the violin bow go straight, like this. How to do this, you may ask? Make sure you have a solid bow hold. It always starts with the grip. So I like to use a baseball analogy, which is basically holding a baseball, man, you're doing that. And now, instead of actually throwing a ball, you put this hand down onto the bow. This is called the frog, this area of the bow. And you want to have very equal spacing between the fingers. And you also want to create sort of like a ball, like you're holding a ball. So you want it to be round. And that circular uh, setup is really, really good for playing the violin. It makes you feel in control when you do that. So that takes a little while, but Make sure you bend those knuckles and get those fingers down over the stick. So now when you're set up, make sure when you play that you don't do the chicken wing thing, which is this thing. Um, you don't want to go behind your, your back or your shoulder like this. No, instead what you really want to be doing is that the movement should come from the elbow and your arm should be extending all the way out in front of you, right? So, you have to be fine with your elbow. The elbow going, being totally straightened here. That's actually the tip of the bow, that's what happens. And then when you do an up bow, to keep it straight, it's almost like this wrist, my wrist here is hitting my nose. And that is because if you didn't, if you don't lift up here, then the bow is gonna, again, not be straight, and you don't want that. So, almost like that happens. So the best way to make sure you're straight is to watch yourself in the mirror, because obviously you want a straight bow. It's hard to see when you're up close like this, but in the mirror, it's a lot easier. So, uh, when you do this, just practice the open strings on each string, and make sure you find a mirror, maybe in the bathroom. It sounds nice in the bathroom with all the, you know, the tiles, a little bit of a, of a wetter sound. So make sure you're set up like this. There's the mirror here, and I'm set up. All open strings. And I look while I'm playing.
We're ready now for tip number two, which is how to use the left hand fingers in the best possible way. So when you play with the left hand, it's really all about using as little movement as possible. The less movement you use, the faster you'll be able to play. Less is more in this case. I know this is a little counterintuitive because when you try to do something fast, you want to use more movement naturally, uh, when instead using less will actually get the job done. Just check out the difference here. Versus. And that first one, I was using uh, a lot of movement. It wasn't very smooth. It didn't sound that good. However, in the second one, I was using less movement and it was much smoother. So this is what I was doing in slow-mo. Versus. So second one, clearly less movement, clearly easier to play. So the key thing here is keep the fingers really close to the fingerboard, uh, use as little movement as possible. Uh, and it's almost like there's a magnet on that finger when you're playing, pulling the fingers closer and the fingers act sort of like little pistons ready to strike when asked. So to practice this, here is an A major scale. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna practice it slow to make sure I, in a very easy setting, can keep those fingers really close to the fingerboard. So here's the A major scale slow. So notice how I kept my fingers really close to the fingerboard during that. That's what you really wanna be doing no matter what the speed is, whether it's slow or fast. So when you do it medium tempo, you keep doing it that way. Right, and then also you notice, I tend to try to hold my fingers down when there's a higher finger that's being played, but I might as well keep those down because I'm gonna go the other way. So those fingers are ready to be hit once I reverse my scale. Now faster. So there you have it. That's a little tip about keeping those left hand fingers really close to the fingerboard. Tip number three, this is also about the left hand. And for those of you who like pancakes, I feel kind of bad, but I just have to say it, no pancake hand allowed when you play the violin. This typically happens when you get tired and want to hold the violin up with the left hand. Uh, and the pancake hand makes it really hard for the fingers to move freely. And also it looks kind of bad. Just don't do this, right? Catch yourself and then start doing it and straighten the wrist. None of this, all of this. So the left hand wrist should be straight when you play the violin pretty much at all times. Tip number three leads me to tip number four, which is how to get comfortable when playing. That way you don't feel the need to do the pancake hand. Make sure that you are as comfortable as possible when you start playing the violin. Holding the violin the wrong way can be tiring and create a bad habit. So this is super important to get right from the beginning. When you go on Amazon to order a violin, it'll typically come with a cheap shoulder wrist and a chin wrist that sits on the side of the violin like this. As your head tends to want to sit in the middle, the chin wrist on the side will be poorly placed for that and most players will rest their chin sort of between the chin wrist and the tailpiece so that's not so good. So in that case, I highly recommend getting a chin wrist that sits in the middle, like this one. A lot of the shoulder wrists out there that come with violins are not shaped very well to fit the shoulder either. So I highly recommend the Forte Secundo made by Wolf. It's durable, wide, and it feels great. At least on my shoulder it does. If you have a short neck, you may be able to get by with just a simple cushion. 
Tip number five, and this is the holy grail of violin playing, is how to play in tune. This is probably the highest concern of beginning violin players, because unlike a guitar, the violin is not a fretless instrument. The best answer I can give you is to use what you got right here. That's right, your ear. So listen to the song as many times as possible before playing it on your violin. Try humming along before you even start playing it on your violin. This ensures your ear is engaged first. If you can sing it, you can play it. In the beginning, I recommend using plastic bands on your fingerboard. And now get your fingers aligned and train your muscle memory. But ultimately, it's your ear that will have to be the boss. Up next with tip number six is something really fun to do on a violin, a technique you can only do on string instruments, the chop. Right, so the down chop with the wrist is gonna be like this. Okay. The chop is a rhythmic technique that sounds a little bit like a drum. So in order to do the chop, you kind of have to hold the bow a little bit different. You, what you wanna do is instead of the regular bow hold, you wanna roll the bow out just a tad. And with the left hand, Mute the strings, meaning you're gonna put the fingers lightly over the strings. Don't press all the way down, just lightly over. And now you raise the bow over where you would normally play here between the bridge and the fingerboard. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a wrist snap. So I'm making a wrist snap and hitting down to the string. I'm not holding back when I hit. You don't want to place the bow carefully. You want to really go for it when you hit it down. And if you hit it at the right angle, so you notice the bow is a little bit behind my shoulder here. If you hit it at right at the at the correct angle, then the bow will really stop right away and you'll get a little bit of that slight bit of crunch, but a crispy sound is the best. Like see that's pretty crispy, right? Karate chop, right? Chop and it stops. So, so once you have the down like that, now you can experiment with an up chop. So the down chop is down here now. Now what I'm gonna do for the up is I'm gonna throw the bow back over my shoulder like that. And what happens is it starts sounding like a little choo-choo train. ready for take up there. So that's the chop in a nutshell. To be a little more fancy with that, you can actually add notes to that. Um, so now I can add harmony. So I'm simply adding what you know is double stops, two notes at the same time and these are called throws, and then the chop happens. Two, three, four, one, two, three. So on the back beat, which is the two and four of every measure, for example, you could place it there. Um, that's a, a great chop pattern. Another one that I do for the intro uh, of the UVC course, I do this chop here. So one of my favorite chop patterns, and it's kind of a funky one, so I love to do that. The cool thing about chop is you can use it for pretty much any style of music. Here's a little bit of a reggae chop. You can do a, kind of a, a swinging jazz chop. Um, you could do, um, once again, a funk chop. Then you can do more of a folk bluegrass chop. So
So the possibilities are endless when it comes to the shop and it really adds a really cool dimension when you can do that on a violin and people are really surprised when they see you doing that, go like, wow, I didn't know that you can do that on a violin and you can supply some background for another instrument to shine. So uh, great technique for sure. All right, here is tip number seven, which is how to play pizzicato. When you do pizzicato, you're essentially plucking the strings like you would on a guitar, except for when you're doing it on the violin, there are two ways of doing it. I will show you the traditional way first and then the rock star way second. First, put the bow down, I already did that, and now by bending your index finger, pulling the string back, and then release it like this. Okay, so that's the regular way. You're essentially putting that thumb on kind of against the fingerboard here, and then you kind of don't pull too hard and you'll break the string, but just pull a little bit so you get a, a decent uh, pizzicato sound in that way. Um, you could actually also do that with your left hand there. So you can do a left hand pitch as well. That is some music that's, uh, especially in classical music, a little bit more advanced. And we'll do that. Uh, a guy famous for writing left hand pits is uh, Paganini in his Caprices. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, left hand pits. And now to the, to the rock star way, which is holding it in the guitar position and then now using your thumb. And again, the principle here is you, you pull the string and then the thumb kind of goes down to the next string but doesn't, doesn't hit that next string. I could do that too. So pizzicato is a really cool technique, a different dimension of playing the violin. I uh, love, to, love to play pits. Tip number eight is how to play with vibrato on the violin. When you listen to singers, vibrato is an important part of the sound and part of why it sounds good and it has emotional character. Same thing on the violin, and since the violin is an emotional instrument, it can work well to use it. I'm going to play you something without vibrato and then with vibrato just to show you what a difference vibrato can make. The key to doing vibrato is figuring out how to roll the finger from side to side. I see a lot of beginners try to force this and the vibrato starts sounding a little bit like a disturbed bug. Not really what you want it to sound like. No, you want it to sound like this. What I did to do that and how I practiced it to start, I just practiced how to roll my finger from side to side. That's actually what makes something vibrate when it's on the violin. So do each finger slow from this position to this position. And, and as you roll, you go faster and faster. And then you take the next finger. Now 
next finger, and so forth. You go through all the fingers, you start slow by rolling from side to side, and then you get it up to speed. And don't be too concerned about what actually, how your vibrato ends up looking. For example, mine is an arm vibrato. That's kind of a less common vibrato. A more common vibrato is a wrist vibrato where you're actually vibrating from the wrist. But mine is using my whole arm is going back and forth. And that works best for me. But the key thing here is don't be too concerned what actually makes something sound good or makes something vibrate. The key thing is when you use vibrato, is to try to stay relaxed in your arm and, and just make the vibrato happen. But remember that vibrato comes from rolling your finger and being relaxed. So that combination is what you have to practice. And if you take UVC, we'll go through a whole bunch of exercises and a whole bunch of, of different methods that you can use to get there. So uh, that was tip number eight. Tip number nine is all about how to get really good at rhythm. The only way to get good at rhythm is being able to feel the beat in your body while you play. I like to tap my foot as I play to keep time. In order to know that you are keeping time well, use a metronome and tap along. Here we go. And now go ahead and tap along. I see so many people that tap along or think they're tapping along to the metronome, but they're, a beat, uh, they're a half beat ahead. So it's really about staying very grounded with that metronome. The tricky thing is playing the violin while you're tapping. So start simple. I'm set the metronome to 4-4 four, four time, which means four beats per measure. With that, start just playing a note on each beat like this on an open string. And once you get that down, now let's go and try to do some off beats. So the notes that fall between the beats. And after you got that, now you can try some triplets, which means three notes for one beat. And even 16th notes. I like to practice rhythm by itself to try to separate it from the notes at first. This means using the open strings. It's pretty common when you play the violin to focus on intonation and playing the right notes. And that's important, but playing rhythm, especially when it comes to playing pop and rock and jazz and all these styles, uh, rhythm is really uh, just as important. So that's something we really dig into here at UVC. So working with a metronome, working with good time, uh, there's nothing like it. All right, we've gotten to tip number 10, how to improvise on a violin. Improvisation is obviously a large topic that we'll talk more about in the UVC course, but I just wanted to give you a few pointers. What improvisation is not is someone coming up with a whole new type of music in the spur of the moment with almost magical ability. Now actually, improvisation is a lot like learning a language. You learn it over time through consistency and practice. With a language, you learn more words to expand your vocabulary. And in the case of improvisation, you learn musical phrases, pro musicians call these licks and lines that you use over and over again. What makes it improvisation is that you can use these licks in a different order each time. You can mix them up, it's the same thing with talking. You have a general idea of what you wanna say but the words come out a little different each time. So to get good at improvisation, you have to develop that vocabulary, which means to practice scales and chords. Um, so I'm gonna teach you a little bit about how to, for example, develop something using a scale called the pentatonic scale. Um, some of you may be familiar with major scales. Those are the most standard scales. Some we're gonna go over the C major scale right now. Sounds like this. So now that you have that, you can actually take some notes out of that uh, major scale to get to the pentatonic scale. So the pentatonic scale, because of the name penta, means five in Latin, 
It only has five notes in it. And uh, what we're gonna take out of that major scale is the fourth degree and the seventh degree of that scale. So we got one, two, three, four. If we don't like that one, we get rid of that. So we're gonna jump to the five and six. That seventh we're gonna get rid of. So we're gonna go straight to that. So now we got That sounds like a pretty groovy scale to use, so I'm gonna play a little bit of improv over it, see how it works. So what I was doing there, I was using that pentatonic scale to kind of improvise and put my own flair into it, using some of these licks and lines to make it really come to life. And you can bet your bottom dollar that at UVC we're gonna get way into improvisation uh, using different scales, using harmony, using theory to get your improvisation chops way up. So uh, stay tuned for that. Okay, last bonus tip. Likely there's no better instrument to make unusual sounds on than a violin. So I'm going to play you a few of those. All right, I hope you found some of those tips helpful and then they inspired you to consider the violin as a pretty cool instrument to play. Since the start of the pandemic, teaching in person has been a tricky thing to do. So I started looking around for violin video courses out there, basically to find alternatives to in-person teaching. And I gotta say, I thought the options were surprisingly limited. It's not that there isn't good material out there, You'll find plenty of instructional violin videos on YouTube, for example. It's just that what I found was scattered and hard to comprehend for a beginner. The videos lack a progressive approach where you gradually layer on top of what you already know. I started the Ultimate Violin course because I found a need for a one-stop shop for someone wanting to learn how to play the violin. So every aspect of the process of learning a musical instrument is covered in this course, including number one, what violin and equipment to get, number two, how to get started playing your first notes, and three, how to play with proper technique, four, how and what to practice, number five, a balanced curriculum that has a mix of exercises and pieces and a variety of styles that reflect the world we live in. And six, learning how to read music and to access the sheet music for each piece. Seven would be play-alongs for each piece. And then eight, focus on rhythm and improvisation and understanding of basic chords. And number nine is access to the UVC website and private Facebook community. And lastly, 10 will be giveaways and contests where you can win free violin equipment. Now the Facebook page is a nice perk since it's an outlet for you to show your progress, where you can actually post videos of your violin playing and ask questions to me and to the community of students. Should you choose to do so, you also always have the option of signing up for private lessons with me. Starting out, I was trained using the Suzuki method and actually met Mr. Suzuki when he was 91 years old and I was seven. I love the method because it focuses on learning by ear. So inspired by the Suzuki system with UVC, I've actually expanded on all of that to create a unique course 
The learning process has been significantly sped up by the multiple camera angles that make figuring out fingerings a breeze. The point is that every aspect of learning how to play the violin is covered and made as easy as possible for you. The ultimate goal is for you to play your favorite songs, to listen to something on YouTube, for example, and be able to play it or to make your own version out of it. I want you to be free as a musician. Maybe you want to start a garage band or join the local orchestra. The ultimate violin course will give you the tools to get there. At present time, we offer two levels, beginner and intermediate. Each course has at least 25 video lessons included. Each lesson ranges from around 10 to 30 minutes in length. Once the advanced and pro levels are out, you will have at least three years of material to work on. The beginner level you can take if you have absolutely no experience playing the violin and still good if you have one year of experience. Intermediate I recommend if you have one to three years of experience playing the violin. As UVC is a brand new course, we're still developing more levels and videos. Within one year, we'll expand with two more levels to include advanced and pro to have a total of over 100 videos available. For my teaching efforts through the years, here are a couple of testimonials that I've received. This one from a former student of mine, Gabe Glastein, who graduated from New England Conservatory and Harvard, and he now makes a living as a violinist and singer and songwriter in Los Angeles. Gabe says, I began working with Mads at age 13, and our first five years of lessons changed my life, and my lessons with him were critical in preparing me to apply to the Harvard New England Conservatory of Music, from which I graduated with a BA in Government and Masters in Music in 2018. The lessons I learned through my time with Mads are innumerable and remain an essential part of the musician and educator I am today. And here is a really recent testimonial from someone who is currently taking the uh, UVC course on the beginner level, as she is from Germany and her name is Barbara. Barbara says, UVC is clearly ultimate. Within a few episodes, I did not only know how to set up and maintain my violin, but I already learned how to play the first songs as an absolute violin beginner. I especially like that I can go at my own pace, one episode, or some exercises from the practice plan can be perfectly squeezed into my workday. With UVC, I might not be the next Grammy-winning violinist, but I at least impressed my dad with happy birthday on the violin. Today, you have the opportunity to become a lifetime member of the Ultimate Violin Course. This will give you unlimited access to all the video lessons, sheet music, play-alongs, website, the works. The yearly price for lessons on an equivalent level to mine would be at least $5,000. My philosophy has always been to make violin lessons affordable. So I've set the price point to $699 for the lifetime membership. Today, however, I'm giving you an exclusive webinar discount and knocking $200 off the price to offer you the lifetime membership for only $499. This is for full access to all the levels with unlimited use. I'll now go over some frequently asked questions. How do I get started and what should I do first? Well, to play the violin, you'll need to either purchase or rent a violin. When I was a kid, everybody would typically rent the violin because a new violin was really expensive. But during the last 15 years or so, the price for a new violin has come down so much that it is more cost effective to actually just buy one now. The most common sizes are a quarter, half, three quarter, and full size. If you're 12 years or older, you likely will be good with a full size. The Kennedy Violin Series I would recommend, which is about $239. I actually have one right here in my hand, and so why don't I play it? You can kind of hear what it is. <laughs>
Not bad. And I would also recommend the Cicilio CVN 300. That's even less, only $159. Believe it or not, there are even cheaper options than that, but then the quality starts becoming an issue. You can get all of this on Amazon and they come with everything you need to play, including a shoulder rest, a bow, a case, and rosin to put on the bow. For both of these, like I mentioned in tip number four, I recommend getting the Wolf Forte Secondo shoulder rest and the Whitner chin rest, or at least the chin rest that goes sort of in the middle. Those will cost an additional $45, but will make you more comfortable when playing. How long does it take to complete each level? There are at least 25 videos for each level, so it really depends on how much time you have to put into the course. I would say six months to one year for each level is realistic. Key thing is not to rush, but take it step by step. How much should I practice? That may be the most asked question I get regarding playing the violin. More importantly than the amount of time you practice is how you practice. Learning something new and something as difficult as the violin requires a lot of concentration so don't be watching no TV while doing this. The problem with distracted practicing is that you tend to develop bad habits. And once that happens, it can take a long time to unlearn those. Also trying to practice a little bit on most days is better than practicing three hours right before the lesson and skipping all the other days in the week. With all of that said, I would say to try to do about 30 minutes of concentrated practice five days a week to start out. When you join UVC, we'll have organized practice plans for each lesson, so you always know what to focus on. What is the age range for taking UVC? That's a really good question. This course is not made for little children, but from age 11 and up, you would be totally fine taking it. This course would, for example, be a great supplement to someone taking violin in middle or high school. It's also great for adult beginners and weekend warriors. In the upper range, how about age 109? That is if you know how to operate a computer. Hopefully no one age 110 is watching right now. Uh, I guess not. Is there a limit or expiration for me to watch the videos? If you sign up for the lifetime membership, there is absolutely no limits for how much you can watch. And also keep in mind that this course is growing, so we're constantly adding new videos, and whenever we add those, you will be able to watch those anytime you like. And also keep in mind that you can access the UVC website and the Facebook community page, so you will have full access to anything you need uh, when it's related to UVC. Can UVC be combined with taking private or group lessons from an outside teacher? Yes, absolutely. It can be a standalone course, but can also be combined with lessons from an outside teacher. I believe having a few different perspectives only can add value to what you're trying to learn. UVC mainly focuses on alternative styles to classical music, like pop and jazz. Through the years of teaching, I've had many students who study with me while having a classical teacher. How about returns? Yes, if UVC is not for you, you can get a full refund within 30 days of signing up, no questions asked. How are you going to be there for me during the teaching process? Well, feel free to post videos on the UVC Facebook page anytime you please. I will view and comment and help you with any questions you may have. In general, try to use the Facebook page since more people will benefit from it and be able to assist. As mentioned earlier, you can also contact me for private online lessons directly. What is your professional life like? I spend a fair amount of time performing for people locally here in the San Francisco Bay Area, and then of course around the US and internationally as well. I performed in over 30 countries, including Australia, Japan, Italy, Germany, and of course, the country where I was born and raised, Denmark. I spend a lot of time writing and arranging music for my band as well, Mads Tolling and the Mads Men. When you are not playing music, what are your interests? I'm a big sports fan and love to play tennis and golf. 
and like to go on hikes out here in the mountains of Northern California. With touring, I get to see a lot of different spots. So I've taken interest in history and so try to you know, learn a little bit about every place that I visit. One of my favorite places I've traveled to that I would recommend highly is Perth, Australia. It's the most isolated city in the world, which is just fascinating. And it has a really cool laid back vibe. So feel free to visit Perth and don't forget your violin. What's the difference between a violin and a fiddle? The difference is that a violin has strings on it and a fiddle has strangs on it. No, seriously, there is no difference in how they look. It's just the type of music you play on a violin tends to be more classical, like this. And a fiddle tends to be more like folk music or bluegrass. Which is, by the way, something that we cover here at UBC. All right, I think we've come to the end of this webinar. If you have any questions for me, just email them to the address on the screen. I'm so glad you could join me and thanks for watching everybody. Remember that the limited time offer is available to you. You can always join our emailing list to stay in touch. Hope to see you on the UVC frequency soon for sure.